Hello, everyone. I am Nita Ragawansi, president of Music Managers Forum US, and uh, we are very excited and thrilled to have this amazing uh, topic and speaker uh, from uh, an organization uh, that is near and dear to my heart and a subject matter that is very near and dear to my heart. And um, so I will tell you about that in a moment and introduce our speaker. But before we do that, I wanted to just say a few words about Music Managers Forum US. Um, we are a 29 year old organization that is a nonprofit. We are the leading and largest trade association for artist managers and self managed artists in the United States. We are part of a broad network called the International Music Managers Forum, which is an umbrella organization that works with over 65 MMF around the world. There's a, one at least in every country, uh, and most every country, many countries. There we go. Um, so we um, work on advocacy, education, and connection, meaning connecting our communities to each other, making sure to provide the platform for a network of artist managers and self-managed artists to um, meet one another, work with each other, hopefully in providing important resources and tools to help managers, businesses, and careers. Um, and along those lines, we always want to make sure we're providing the most robust education, um, uh, panels, workshops, um, uh, all day long conferences uh, to, in order to uh, provide as much professional and business growth that we can for our members and community. Um, one such thing that I wanted to point out is that we have been doing a series of MMF US summits across the United States. We kicked off this past March with Los Angeles, and then we did Atlanta and Nashville. And coming up this fall, we'll be doing New York, Miami, Chicago, and Austin, and adding more cities as we go along, and also going back to those other cities that we've been to. So we are really working towards expanding our in real life um, network and community and membership. And we hope to um, have you all and we invite you and encourage you all to get involved when we announce um, our presence in those cities. We are doing it in the form of an all day long conference called the MMF Summit. And with that, I want to make sure I introduce to you our new executive director of MMF US, Sharon Tapper. Sharon, say hi. Hello. <laughs> um Honored to, to be part of this organization and to really help build Beyond Where It Already Is. It's such an a, a esteemed organization and be able to take it into its next part of this journey and to be able to be part of this process. So I'm really excited to, to be part of this. And I, I thank the board and, and obviously Nita yourself for letting me have this opportunity. And I'm really enjoying getting to know all, the, all these wonderful people and such as Tiara and the folks at Sound Exchange. Yeah. Well, we are very excited and thrilled to have you, Sharon, uh, helping to lead this organization. So thank you so much for taking on this important work as being our, our, our new and first executive director of MMF US. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to uh, the fabulous, fabulous Tiara, <laughs> Tiara Guy. Tiara is the, um, okay, I'm gonna get that wrong already. <laughs> the, the Associate Director of Marketing Operations and Industry Engagement at Sound Exchange. Um, Sound Exchange is near and dear to my heart. I used to work there. Um, we, it's an organization, as many of you know, and I'm going to just do that one liner and then leave it to you, Tiara. But uh, they are the uh, nonprofit organization that is designated by the US government to collect and distribute royalties, uh, specifically digital performance royalties for recording artists and record labels. And so of course, it's been an important stream of revenue for so many of you out there. And it's super important to know and get to know and understand, have a deeper understanding of sound exchange, maybe how to maximize your royalties, how to get a little bit more in those checks. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Tiara Guy. Tiara, thank you for being here and take yeah. it away. 
Thank you so much, Nita. Um, it's a pleasure being able to work with you again now in a different capacity. Um, but I'm so happy to be here um, with you all today to you know, help you learn a little bit more about sound exchange, what exactly we cover, and the ways to take advantage of all the tools and features that we kind of offer to ensure you're maximizing your royalty collection with us. Um, I'm gonna share my screen with you all. All right. So one of the most exciting things lately with Sound Exchange, as some of you may have noticed, um, is that we've recently had a little bit of a rebrand, refresh of our website. Um, we now offer a mobile app to our artists and rights owners, um, and you know have a more color that pops and things like that. Um, but it's been a really exciting time for us. Um, and so I did want to kick off with a little bit of a sizzle reel to give you um, some flavor for that new uh, refresh we've done. Okay, so um, hopefully that gave you an, a little insight into the new um, rebrand. You got to see some clips of our mobile app, a new website. Um, but just to share some kind of facts about Sound Exchange, um, we've distributed nearly $9 billion to date since our inception. Um, and in 2021 alone, um, we distributed right over the billion dollar mark. Um, we represent more than 570,000 different creators and that's growing every day. Um, from the smallest indie artist to the largest in our industry, um, we kind of cover the whole gambit. Um, we represent over 3,600 different digital streaming services um, who use the compulsory license that Sound Exchange administers. Um, and those are the ones who are streaming the music and sending us uh, reports of what they've played so that we can distribute it to the appropriate featured artists and sound recording copyright owners. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about international royalty collection um, and the partnerships we have in over 50 different countries. So as far as the particular royalties that Sound Exchange covers, um, as Nita kind of mentioned at the top, we are going to be covering featured artists and sound recording copyright owners anytime they're streamed through satellite, internet, or cable TV radio. Um, it's also important to understand that Sound Exchange is in the non-interactive digital streaming space. You know, we're covering Sirius XM, Pandora, iHeartRadio, different music uh, choice cable stations, college radio stations. Um, but it has to be non-interactive. So you can't be able to queue up exactly which song you want to hear, be able to rewind and all those types of things. So we're not going to be covering that on-demand audio-visual platform like your Spotify's, YouTube's, Apple Music. Um, but Sound Exchange will be covering that non-interactive digital space specifically for the featured artists and whoever owns the sound recording. Oh, sorry about that. As far as um, the copyright, again, going back to what sound exchange is specifically going to cover, it's important to know that two copyrights exist in every recorded song. You have the underlying music, which is the notes and the lyrics, and then you have the actual sound recording, which is the permanent fixations of sounds. Um, one of our biggest questions that we normally get is um, from an artist who is also a writer or a publisher and saying like, oh, well, I'm already with BMI or ASCAP, you know, I do, why would I need to sign up with sound exchange? Um, so it's important to understand the difference here. And um, one of the 
examples that we love to use at Sound Exchange is um, the recording R-E-S-P-E-C-T, which was um, written and composed by Otis Redding, but kind of made famous by Aretha Franklin's recording of it. So in this particular scenario, um, Otis Redding is going to be collecting as a songwriter and a publisher directly from either ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, Global Music Rights, whereas Aretha would be collecting her featured performance through Sound Exchange. Um, so it's important to be with somebody for the musical composition and then with Sound Exchange for performance and sound recording. So it's not that you have to choose between one of them and us, you should be with one of them and us in order to maximize that revenue. As far as how it's kind of split up once, you know, that money is flowing into sound exchange, 50% um, goes to the sound recording copyright owner, typically the record label, but obviously we're seeing a lot more artists who also own their own recordings. 45% um, goes directly to the featured artists or artists on the recording. Um, and then 5% of every dollar that comes in is sent to the um, AFM sag after fund for non-featured, you know, backup musicians, session players, and that's across the board under the statute that we operate under. Um, so if you rep if you represent an artist who um, is also the sound recording copyright owner, they're going to be collecting 95% of what's coming through the door. Um, I also wanted to mention that royalties are going to be retroactive for up to three years. So I'm going to cover a few things. Um, but as far as our approach, um, we'd love to share that we have reliable monthly payments. Um, you'll see as part of our registration process, you have um, a couple different ways you can set up payments. But if you are doing direct deposit or international wire, um, your payments can be on a monthly basis. Um, transparent practices, I'm going to cover a little bit of our online portal, um, which again gives you just the most transparent view of your account, what's going on, your statements, how to claim your repertoire, um, just the technical expertise. We're constantly trying to build new tools and features for our industry in addition to our members. Um, you might have noticed that on the Sound Exchange website, we have an ISRC code database that's available for the public. Um, we realized, you know, something like that didn't exist in our industry. And so Sound Exchange decided to build it and make it available. So with that metadata that we're receiving from the sound recording copyright owners, um, we've now made that available. If you need to search for an ISRC code, you can use that database on our website. Um, low expenses, Sound Exchange has one of the lowest admin rates in the world. Um, so we're pretty proud of that. Uh, inclusive payments, like I mentioned earlier, you know, we include the smallest to the largest artists and careers and labels, um, and we're very inclusive in that way because we represent the entire industry. Um, and then I will touch on international royalties and the difference between registration and membership. So the easiest, most efficient way to get set up and registered with Sound Exchange is definitely going to be through our online registration. It's available on our website. It's available in Spanish. Um, this is not what you would use to update an existing account or um, to sign up an estate or heir um, for an artist that may have passed. Um, but this is definitely going to be the way you're going to want to set up your registration with Sound Exchange. You're going to be given a couple paths when you're um, starting the process, um, such as are you registering yourself or someone else? Um, the biggest distinction here, if you're registering someone else, we require an authorization form where the artist or band members are authorizing their representative to fill out this registration on their behalf. Um, the payment still having to be made directly to the artists um, or individuals. Um, you'll also be choosing, is this registration just for performance, for sound recording copyright ownership, or for both? Um, so you'll be given a couple different options. Again, do you want to be paid as an individual or to a company that you wholly own? Do you want a physical check in the mail, which is distributed quarterly, or direct deposit? Um, so you should look at the registration process as setting up your payment place. We won't actually ask you to claim repertoire through this process. That comes next. Um, but we might ask you, you know, what names or aliases do you release under? Are you a part of any groups? Um, but you won't actually get into recording claims as part of the registration process. But this should only take about 10 minutes if you have all the information you need. So once you register, um, our online registration will move into the membership step. Um, so if you are just registered, that means you're covering your US domestic collection 
of royalties. Um, but if you take the additional step to become a member, you can authorize Sound Exchange to collect international royalties on your behalf as well. So in addition to the authorization through our membership agreement, that is coupled with our international mandate, where you're letting us know, do you want Sound Exchange to collect for you worldwide? Um, which means it would encompass all of these reciprocal agreements that Sound Exchange has in place. Um, so if you visit our website, we have a full list of all the different territories that we do have these reciprocal agreements with. Um, in these situations, that territory will, will collect on behalf of our artists or rights owners, and we'll collect on behalf of theirs, and then we'll swap the money. Um, so you are able to see, you know, which territories we cover, who the collection management organization is in that territory, and if our agreement is performer-based, rights owner-based, or both. Um, you know, I did want to mention again, we have one of the lowest overall admin rates in the world. Um, so with that international mandate, you're also able to say, do you want us to collect worldwide? Or you can customize it if you want to opt out of certain territories. Um, you're able to expand or limit your mandate through Sound Exchange at any time. So once you are registered and set up, um, you'll basically be granted access to our online portal. It's called SX Direct. It's 24-7 um, self-service. This is so that if you need to update a quick address um, or check a statement, um, as well as a suite of other tools that I'm about to touch on, um, this is that transparency that I mentioned. We want you to be able to see into your account, see what's linked for payment, know what you still need to claim, things like that. Um, as far as who has access to this portal, as part of the registration process, you're going to be listing who you want the contact to be. You know, who is Sound Exchange supposed to communicate with um, for the information around the account? And we call that person the primary contact. Um, there can only be one primary contact on an account, and that's the person that also has the ability to edit payment information. And there can only be that one person. That being said, that primary or the artists themselves or, you know, performers can authorize up to 50 guests on an account. Um, guests cannot edit payment information. However, when they're added by either the primary or the artist, um, they're given a certain right, whether it's view only, which is kind of look, but don't touch anything, um, or view with repertoire. And that means that they can assist with making claims on recordings and helping manage the catalog on behalf of the artist or label. Um, so if you need guest access, it's available to just kind of instantly do it within the portal. Um, we also have a form if need be, but uh, the portal makes a lot of things like this much easier um, to be able to add people um, that you might need to have access to your account or statements. So once you're kind of logged in and looking at your dashboard, um, one of the things I wanted to mention is that membership is at a performer level. So when I say performer, um, let's take an example of um, the artist, you know, rapper being, I think, in, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year, but Eminem. Um, obviously releases under Eminem, that's his artist name, but his performer name and also legal name is Marshall Mathers. Um, so membership is done at that performer level. Um, so it would say Marshall Mathers when you're logging in and that's where you would need to let us know if you know he's a member or not. This is important for bands as well. So the artists might be the Beatles, but the performers are gonna be Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, et cetera. Um, so again, we can't, we need this information on a performer level because that's how we're able to actively make claims internationally. Um, and so we're gonna ask that you confirm the performer information we have on file, let us know if we're, you know, at, need to add someone or are missing someone and that we have the appropriate information. So you'll be able to do that. This also allows for performer-based claiming. So this is great for bands that have had rotating lineups throughout the years um, and different members. Um, you're able to kind of create a lineup with the different performers linked to that artist, and then you're able to actively claim recordings based on those lineups. Um, so you could search on a particular album that had a particular lineup, and then hopefully this will just help with distribution on the back end once you receive the royalties. Um, one of the things we are also able to add to the portal to hopefully save some time, um, let's say that you um, submitted a registration for your artist but forgot that they actually own a few of their recordings. And so, you know, you didn't submit a registration for them as both a performer and rights owner, just as an artist. 
Um, the nice thing is when you are logged into the portal, you can go to what I'm about to cover, our search and claim tool, and you can actually create a rights owner profile for them. And then instead of having to completely go through our registration process again, this will allow you to immediately start claiming recordings for them as a rights owner in addition to as a performer. Um, unfortunately, we can't do it the other way around um, as of now in the portal, where if you've registered them as a rights owner but forgot the performer side, um, you're still going to have to go through the registration process again in that instance. Unfortunately, we do ask for a lot more information on the performer side, um, so you will need to, um, as of now, go through the registration again for that. But at least for the rights owner side, this will hopefully save um, some time. But now this is kind of what I like to call the star of the show, our search and claim tool. This is um, easily one of the uh, most beneficial tools we've been able to offer through the portal. Um, this is how you're going to claim recordings through Sound Exchange, um, especially for artists. You are going to log into the portal. There's a My Catalog tab, and then you'll click on Search and Claim. You'll be able to search our re whole database of recordings based on title, artist, ISRC code, or album. Um, the search results will come back based on your criteria, and um, it will only include recordings that are not already currently linked to the account for payment. When the search results come back, you'll select the recordings that you want to claim, let us know what percentage you're claiming, and submit your cart. Um, we used to require really massive spreadsheets from artists um, where they had to type in all the information, and it was a lot. So hopefully this alleviates the painful process that repertoire claiming um, used to be. And we definitely recommend taking advantage of this tool, at least on a quarterly basis, if not a monthly, um, maybe searching common misspellings of your artist's name or searching an upcoming project, you know, an album specifically, um, and just making sure nothing falls through the cracks. Um, as we know, metadata is a challenging um, hurdle in our industry and it's not always perfect. So we definitely wanna make sure that nothing falls through the cracks. Um, that being said, on the rights owner side, when they are using search and claim, we do require an additional piece of information. Um, while a performer on a recording is never gonna change on that particular recording, the rights owner can. Obviously, recordings can be bought and sold and licensed. So in addition to the percentage you're claiming on a recording, we're also going to ask you for the date range. Um, is it inception to perpetuity? Is it just a particular year or two? Um, so we will ask for that information. Um, we're also going to ask our rights owners um, for any uh, maybe missing metadata we have for a record and asking them to kind of fill in that information or supply it to us if we don't already have it. Sound Exchange prefers that we receive metadata directly from a sound recording copyright owner, um, since the data that we get from a licensee might not always be in the best shape, as I mentioned. Um, you'll know that a recording, um, again, is linked to your account for payment because it's going to show up under associated recordings. Um, you'll see where this arrow is pointing when you're in your dashboard. You're able to click that and actually drill down to the recordings that are linked for payment. Um, any recording that's linked won't show up in those search results for search and claim. So this is how you can tell that an, a recording is linked. And obviously, your statement is going to tell you what's earning and what you're being paid for. Um, but again, going back to metadata, we're going to ask that our sound recording copyright owners are submitting their metadata directly to us. You know, we find they have the best version of those recordings. Um, and again, this is what we'll use to build the ISRC database. Um, if it's one or two recordings at a time, we've made it really easy to just go ahead and submit that information. Otherwise, we do have that bulk upload feature where it brings back that good old spreadsheet where they can submit, you know, hundreds, thousands of recordings um, and upload it and have a record of their upload history. This is also how you'll actively make claims. Um, rights owners can also use search and claim, um, but we just recommend as soon as you have that metadata for an upcoming project, go ahead and submit it to Sound Exchange so that when it is receiving um, AirPlay, we can be matching it out and paying it out as quickly as possible. Um, I also did want to touch on another feature that we have for rights owners in the portal. It's our overlaps and disputes feature. Um, this is when an overlap is triggered. It will show you um, who the other claimants might be claiming that recording, what their claim is. Is it a, a matter of the percentage um, having an overlap? Is it a date overlap? 
Um, but basically, you have the option to relinquish your claim, maintain it as is, or edit. Um, perhaps you do have a percentage or a date range off. Um, if you don't respond within 90 days, you do automatically relinquish. Um, and if you just didn't take the action you needed to in that amount of time, you can reclaim the track to start the process again. Um, but you will receive these automatic weekly emails from Sound Exchange reminding you if you have recordings in overlap or dispute. Um, it might be in the other claimant's court to take some action, but we're going to send you that reminder weekly. Um, but this has been an awesome tool. We've seen tons of recordings um, resolved that were in overlap or dispute. Um, we're not able to offer this on the artist side in the portal at this time, just because performer overlaps and disputes are a lot trickier. Um, we do have an artist resolution team that's going to be reaching out to those performers directly to mediate um, and handle that side of things. But this is what we're able to offer in the portal for rights owners. Um, if the claimants are not able to come to an agreement, um, then we place the recording on hold and provide contact information to all the parties involved to communicate with one another to figure it out and then let us know how it should pay out. I also did want to touch on letters of direction. This is a um, huge topic that we get questions on all the time. Um, letters of direction are something that a featured artist will use to allocate a percentage of their royalty to a creative participant on the recording. So a producer, a mixer, an engineer. Um, a letter of direction has to be signed by um, the artist or the representation. Um, it can be applied retroactively for those three years or from a date moving forward. Um, it's important to mention that if the recording is a collaboration between multiple featured artists, um, that producer, mixer, engineer would want to secure letters of direction from each of those featured artists in order to get their full percentage of the artist share. Um, the letter of direction serves for the way that we'll set up an account for that producer or mixer engineer, but they're not necessarily seen as registered directly with Sound Exchange, just because they cannot use that search and claim tool to make claims on recordings. It, it will just show them which LODs are currently active. It's again, the portal, it's allowing them access portal so they can view their statements and things like that. Um, but you wanna make sure that you're using our most up-to-date letters of direction. Um, and uh, yeah, this is definitely hugely used by our industry. It's something that Sound Exchange has been doing for years, but that was codified into law by the passage of the Music Modernization Act. Um, so yeah, let us know if you have any other questions about letters of direction. Um, but I will also say it is difficult to go back retroactively to, to secure signatures um, from artists on these things. So we always encourage um, producers, mixers, engineers to get those signatures as far up front as they can, like in the studio before you even turn on the lights. Um, I also wanted to touch on our advocacy. Um, Sound Exchange is based in Washington, DC, um, right next to Capitol Hill. Um, we're actually a part of the Copyright Royalty Board um, rate proceedings. Sound Exchange is always pushing for higher rates for creators and um, are glad to say that um, in the last several years, we have been able to get um, huge increases for creators, um, but we're always gonna be kind of um, fighting that fight and being a part of those proceedings. Um, we're also helping to push legislation called the American Music Fairness Act. Um, this speaks to the lack of a performance right on terrestrial radio. Um, if we go back to that example of Otis Redding and Aretha Franklin, um, you know, when, when RESPCT is played on terrestrial radio, Otis is collecting as a writer and publisher, but Aretha unfortunately is not seeing any royalty um, from that play uh, because there is no feature performer right in our country. Um, Sound Exchange is one of like four countries in the world that doesn't have that right. Um, the other countries being like North Korea, Iran, Iraq. Um, so Sound Exchange just does not believe that this is fair. We believe that we, you know, need this right in this country. So we are um, supporting that legislation and um, helping secure support. Um, if you see in the top right, Dionne Warwick helped us introduce this legislation in the House this year. Um, so, if, you know, if you have artists who are passionate about advocacy and this right, um, we would love to collaborate with them. But um, kind of what I call the band-aid to not having the performance right in this country is national treatment. And this is just um, seeing that American artists are paid for terrestrial radio rights in other countries, regardless of their citizenship. 
Um, so we do have several territories that are supplying national treatment and um, paying American artists for that right, but there are several that don't, um, simply because America doesn't have that reciprocal performance right. Um, so Sound Exchange is going to continue to fight um, just to, you know, make that fair. There's billions of dollars being left on the table for featured performers. So uh, that's a huge part of the advocacy we're working on right now. So um, as far as joining us, you know, registering, making sure your artists are signed up with us and collecting what they, um, you know, have earned through non-interactive digital streaming, um, becoming a member and authorizing sound exchange for any international collection, again, at the lowest admin rate in the world. Um, you can get connected through our newsletters, our social channels, um, you know, just find ways to uh, see what we're putting out there. Anybody who's passionate, who would like to kind of help us with this um, fight, whether it's contacting your congressman or joining us on the hill um, please let us know but we're also at different conferences and festivals and love to meet face to face and you know answer questions and um, just find ways to collaborate especially with the creator community and we've recently launched a couple franchises that speak to that one of which is called Breakthrough Beats. Um, this is a way that we're just kind of spotlighting emerging artists who have been accruing much of their royalty in a short amount of time. And we recently have showcases featuring some of these. So if you have artists that you want to submit for review, um, we will absolutely do that. And we just want to shed light on more and more creators and upcoming projects. Um, one, we're at these conferences and festivals. We also have one that's called Sound Advice. Um, again, just getting these great uh, tidbits and information and stories from creators, for creators. Um, we'd love to talk to your artists. So just let us know if you'd like to collaborate with us on any of that. You can definitely check out our socials to kind of see what that's all about. Um, but we want to highlight upcoming projects that you have, things you might have coming up, um, just, you know, exposing more awesome stuff being done in our industry. But yeah, that is kind of what I wanted to share with you about sound exchange. So I was going to see if there were any questions. Tiara, do you see the Q&A in there? Uh, Click on the Q&A. Great. Go for it if it's, uh, <laughs> there you go. Okay. So somebody asked about um, the dispute email contact with Sound Exchange. Um, I'm, I guess this is referring to if you have a recording that is in dispute and Sound Exchange supplies you with the contact information we have for that other claimant. This person's saying, what if I don't get a response from that person? Does Sound Exchange assist with getting in contact? Um, so again, we are going to share what we have and how we've been able to get in contact. Unfortunately, there's not much we can really do beyond that. Um, I mean, we will, I think that there might be a um, process where if you're not getting a response, um, we have a great client resolutions team. And so I, I believe you'll be connected with them within this dispute process. So I would say, you know, speak to that client resolutions team member, and they're going to give you um, as much information as we can, um, especially if you're not getting a response from the other claimant. Somebody also asked, can we search with partial ISRCs? Um, I guess I'm not sure exactly like search what, like search and claim or search the database. Um, I feel like I would need a little bit more information to know how to best answer that. Um, if you're speaking to search and claim, again, you have four different fields that you can search by for all of our um, recordings. I'm not sure a partial ISRC code would be the great way to search, considering there could be multiple recordings coming back with that partial code. Um, but again, we do supply other means of information that you could use to try and find the recording in question. Um, as far as our ISRC database, unless we have all the metadata for that recording, we wouldn't be putting it in the database. Tiara, I have a quick question for you, um, if I may, <laughs> since I have the controls. Um, <laughs> let's, um, I wanted to understand, like when I'm in the system, if I'm looking for an artist, which I was just doing while you were talking, um, if if I'm in the account, but then you were showing that there's this great search and claim area. So are you suggesting that every artist that has, you know, if I'm an artist and a rights owner, independent artist, I have an account, I'm in there, I'm thinking I'm not getting paid, 
everything I should be getting paid. I should go look in that search and claim to see if something was spelled wrong or there's a hyphen where there shouldn't be in the name. Yes, that- absolutely. So a couple things. So if you're in the search and claim and the recordings aren't coming up that you're searching for, you're going to want to first check your associated recordings to make sure they're not already linked for payment. And that's why they're not coming up. Or it could be that whoever the sound recording copyright owner is, maybe your record label, or maybe you have an agreement with your distributor who's handling that side, um, you can make sure that they have submitted the metadata to us. Um, Because basically it can only get in our system either by being submitted by the sound recording copyright owner or reported as being streamed by a service. So those would be the top two things I'd say, make sure your label or rights owner has submitted the metadata and make sure it's not already linked to your account for payment under associated recordings. Okay. And then what is the ISRC search that's on the website for? Did you go through that? Sometimes people can be like, oh, I don't know what my ISRC code is for this recording. Um, And so we kind of built the database where you can search by artist album title and pull back and it'll have the ISRC code for you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And yes, I'm inviting everybody out there to please put stuff into the Q&A. If you can't seem to find that, go to the chat. Tiara is here to answer questions, which is exciting. So go for it. (laughs) We have more in there. I see more. I think- Yes, yeah, someone kind of asked about that 5% that we pay to this, the union for the AFM SAG after fund and non-featured. What I'll say is right now, that's the statute we operate under. Sound Exchange is required to do that um, through law. Um, AFM SAG after has their own distribution process. Um, and so you would need to sign up directly with them if you are non-featured. Um, but as far as like, this is currently what the law is in the U.S. and this is what sound exchange is required to do. So um, as of now, that is the 5% is applied across the board, whether or not you're using a background musician or vocalist. Um, Someone also asked about streamlining the process for LODs with multiple features and multiple producers. Um, So unfortunately, like we will need um, a, a letter of direction per creative Uh, participant. So if you're paying four different producers, each one is going to need a separate letter of direction just because the letter of direction serves as how we create a payment place or an account for them. Um, But you could reuse the same repertoire chart, um, which is kind of part two of the LOD to let us know what the recordings are, if they are the same. Um, But as far as streamlining, I mean, we're gonna need the artist camp. If it's a band um, with multiple members, um, in some cases they will um, authorize an LOD signatory so that you don't need to get every single band member's signature on the letter of direction. So I recommend if you're a you know, creative participant who's dealing with a band of multiple members, maybe asking if they have that LOD signatory or have considered one um, so that you're not having to get every single signature. Um, But unfortunately we will need one per producer um, in order to make sure the right people get paid. Um, Someone asked about starting the submission um, who might've gotten late. So again, registration is available on our website. Um, It should be very easy to find. That's our online registration. Should only take you about 10 minutes if you have all the information you need. Somebody asked about kind of uh, the definition of a featured artist versus like a sample artist. What I will say, this triggers a good question between um, understanding covers at Sound Exchange. Again, we are um, concerned with who the featured artist on that particular recording is, um, not with writing or publishing or composing. And so um, in that case, um, we, you know, are concerned with who actually featured on here. Sampling does get a little more um, nuanced and difficult. It kind of it kind of depends like, you know, back in the day we used to see like who's on the album cover to kind of differentiate who's featured. But this is also when overlaps can happen. Um, performers believing like if a band doesn't agree on how royalties should be split um, or believe the percentages should be different. Again, um, we don't interpret contracts and agreements. It's up to them to agree and figure it out. Otherwise, Sound Exchange has to place it on hold. So um, in most cases, they end up kind of figuring it out. Um, 
Someone asked a great question. If you're in a band or like a duo, do you both need to register or just the band? Um, and can the label register you? So those are great questions. So if you're in a band or a duo, you kind of have two options. You can each register individually and claim your percentage of recordings. Or if you own a company together wholly and no one else owns it, then you can pay 100% to that company and you will honor that. Um, but the label cannot register on behalf of the artist. Um, we won't, in that scenario, pay. The label's kind of seen as a third party. And sound exchange policy is um, that we pay the artist directly. And so um, it's also important to understand these agreements you might have with your distributors, like a CD Baby or Symphonic, who might say like, oh, we can collect your sound exchange royalties for you. Um, they can help collect on the rights owner side um, and that portion of royalties, but they cannot collect the artist portion of royalties. So it's important to understand you still need to register your artist directly for their artist portion because we won't pay a label or a distributor or a third party for that portion. Um, someone asked, are there plans to make LOD authorization online instead of thing? Um, I'm not sure if that's in the pipeline currently, but I will bring it up as, um, something that someone has requested to see if we are working on that. Um, but as of right now, it is those forms that we need. Um, let's see. What if an artist is not set up to handle accounting for commissions to their team and prefers that the income comes to a third party account? Is that possible? So across the board, um, typically artists, again, the artist portion of royalties, um, Sound Exchange has a policy that we want to pay the artist directly as an individual or to a company that they own. Um, that being said, thinking about this question, sometimes the artist might, you know, authorize a representative on their account and then not be able to log in it. Um, at any time, the artist is going to take precedence. And um, if we have, you know, communication with that artist and they need access, we are always going to grant them that access. Um, but as far as a third party, um, there are very particular situations where um, we may allow for this, but you have to contact us and we have to look into the situation. But, um, you know, for the most part, sound exchange policy is that artist payments do not go to a third party and that they go to the artist directly. I think that is all the questions that have come through. So... Hopefully this was really helpful for everyone and you were able to learn something. Um, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm gonna put my email address in the chat. I am happy to speak with anybody and help you with anything you might need sound exchange related. Um, that's what I'm here to do. And so hopefully this was helpful though and you can take advantage of some of the tools and things that we offer in our portal. Wonderful. This is really great, Tiara. Thank you so much. This is so for having me. And I love that you have your email address out there. Everyone grab that from the chat. You're going to need that. You <laughs> are going to need that. Tiara P at soundexchange.com. Do it. Um, one thing I wanted to do was to thank Sound Exchange for being an absolutely amazing sponsor uh, to MMFUS for all of your support. Um, you know, thank you to Sound Exchange for your generosity. You are a gold sponsor. So thank you, Sound Exchange, for being a gold sponsor to the Music Managers Forum US and helping our amazing uh, membership and community to uh, do all of the amazing things that we get to do we get to do because you guys are amazing so thank you um and anything else last last call on the tiara front any other questions for sound exchange did we get i saw the the counter go up one <laughs> i think cute. somebody was asking about cd baby pro again i think i kind of um touched on distributors and just making sure you understand your agreement with them and that they won't be able to collect the artist side but um you know, I can't speak to their distribution on the rights owner side, but that is the portion they'd be able to collect. 
That's right. Just to, I'll quickly answer on the CD Baby side. They actually, when without signing up at CD Baby Pro, I believe that when you sign up for CD Baby, there is a little opt-in, opt-out on sound exchange collections outside of CD Baby Pro, which also then collects neighboring rights and PRO monies uh, for that extra added uh, service. So anyway, as Tiara said, yeah, take a look at it. Look closely at what's being collected and what's not. Um, and and know that, yes, they're not getting the artist side necessarily. And think about maybe if you are interested in going direct to sound exchange, uh, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> so um, thank you again so very much. Sharon, are you, are you there? Do you want to say a few words of uh, goodbye <laughs> to our teams, our team, our audience here? <laughs> No, that was so informative and exactly what we as, as, as professionals need to know, quite honestly. And every time I, I, I come to, to your events over, the, over the, the years, it's like I always learn something new and it's always been refined. And I love that you're now adding on, you know, the sound advice and the breakthrough artists. These are all just wonderful, innovative ways in which to, to help everybody. And advocacy is so dear to me personally um, that, you know, it, it's great to be able to work with, um, you know, Linda Bosbaum and your whole, whole team there at Music First. So thank you for that. Yes. Again, thank you for having us be a part of this. And I'm so happy that we're able to help educate and I am here to assist in any way I can. So amazing. I thank you, Tiara. Thank you on behalf of MMFUS. And uh, thank you for being here for us. And thank you to the participants in the audience for participating. Please tune in for more uh, in your email box on socials. I encourage you all to join MMFUS. Click the join button on our website, mmfus.com. And uh, make sure you sign up for our newsletter. Stay in tune uh, with all that we're doing because we're there to help. So thanks, everyone. And see you next time. Bye. <laughs>